we help each other out in our walk, in our lives, in our personal righteousness. And in fact, in the beginning here, he says, look, if someone is caught in a sin, help people in the fellowship. It's like, well, you know, and so you almost think that, well, you've got to pay the price. You did the crime, you do the time. Right? I mean, I think it's, it's kind of inbuilt. Like, you can't just get away with it. I didn't get away with anything. You're not getting away with anything. And so it's almost this, there, there's this spirit that can, per, that can kind of creep in even as we try to help somebody. But that's not, that's not appropriate, Paul says. Look, you who are spiritual, restore them gently. Man, I've been guilty many times of restoring somebody not gently. My apologies, anybody out here, that was you. Sorry, Les. But, but, but that's the admonition that Paul gives us to do so. But it's also carrying those of others. And you know, when, when everybody has that spirit, then everything gets carried pretty easily, actually. You know, the paradox of genuine community living is that, all, is that it's all for each and each for all. But no one can slide through hoping that other people's devotion and godliness will suffice. And that's kind of what it comes down to. It's really, it's really looking at and seeing that, look, I, I, I really have a responsibility to carry my burden, but I also have a responsibility to help others out. And I think the temptation comes, and we can kind of go, for some of us, maybe we say, well, i got a lot of burdens. I wish some, why isn't someone helping me with my burdens? It's kind of the wrong way to look at it. The way we should look at it individually is I need to make, I need to make sure that I am carrying my burdens, but at the same time, others, we should always be looking out for others saying, hey, how, who, who else can I help? And, and, and that's sort of the, 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 the synergy that happens that Paul's talking about. It's not just about carrying your own burdens or, or, or you know, you carry your own and I'm carrying my own and we're all good. But, it's, but, but, but at the same time, it's, not, it's also not, where, where's the help? Hello? You guys stink. No one's carrying my stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, and so it's, there, there's, a, there's a, a mutuality again that we see in this that's kind of hard to, to describe. But, but, it's, but it's there and it's necessary. But again, this happens in the context of the fellowship. Paul's saying, look, guys, this is, this, is what, this is what church looks like. This is what walking in the Spirit looks like. We help one another out. Amen? You know, it also has to do with teamwork and how you view yourself. I kind of touched on this already. But how you view yourself. Because, as I said, you have to do your part, right? It's not just someone else carrying your part, but you doing your part. And I think this kind of shows up in so many different ways, but uh, let me just draw a few parallels if I could. Let's say, for instance, uh, you know, as a fellowship, we have a lot of kids, right? Right? You better amen because you're the ones, you know, we have a lot of kids, right? Our, our children's ministry. It's awesome. I think most, you know, all of us, you know, we, we all agree, man, love the kids, love the kids' ministry. But let me tell you something. It takes a lot of people and a lot of volunteers to run a children's ministry every Sunday, right? And so if we don't all pitch in and carry the burden, guess what happens? Guess who carries the burden? A very large burden. Raul or Veronica or Sherry or whoever, whoever the, the coordinator is, their burden becomes heavier because we're not helping out. Does that make sense? So you can apply it there. I think there's application uh, with, with that particular ministry. Or you know, let's, let's just take you know, small group leadership as an example. You know, if, if some of us don't step up to facilitate and, and lead small groups, what ends up happening you get group bloat. Some of you know what group bloat is. Basically, when there's nowhere else to sit in the room, and, you know, it's, there's like 50 kids upstairs making a lot of noise, and 45 adults downstairs who have nowhere to sit, that's called group bloat. Somebody needs to step up and say, you know what? I'll take a group now and lead it's carrying the burden do you i mean i and i love our small group leaders. we have a we have a, an amazing group of small group leaders in our church awesome brothers and sisters 
But you know what? They're, these guys are all, this is what they do this kind of just out of the goodness of their heart, carrying the load, carrying a, piece of, a small piece of the load. And the bigger that little load gets, the more woman gets to them. So others need to step up. All right? How about contribution? How about our, in our giving? You know, we have, as, a, as a church, we have, we have obviously expenses, you know, collectively as a group, but then we also support missions and everything that we do, right? Uh, benevolence, taking care of each other's needs, these types of things that we do. When everybody does their part, it's awesome. But when everyone doesn't do their part, it becomes a burden to those who do. Does that make sense? And now, we have a very broad cross-section of socio-economical folks in here, and amen for that. That's the way we want it to be. That's the way it should be. So we all have different ability, or different, our ability to give varies from person to person. But it doesn't, it's not about what, it's about participating and being involved. I was talking to, uh, to Mark Fisher, who's the president of our board, the other day, and he said, you know, there's actually, um, statistically, there's about, there's a, I think it, I don't remember, I'm probably getting the number wrong, but it's about 20 Five percent is that about right, Mark? He doesn't know what I'm going to say, but he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Twenty-five percent or so of our of our fellowship who have given nothing in contribution. Now, I'm, this isn't a this isn't a money rattling sermon, okay? I'll, I'll let you know when those are coming. <laughs> but you know what? And I'm not even appealing and saying, hey, we got to give more because we got this or that. All I'm saying this isn't even about that. It's about the spirit of carrying your load. And not putting that burden on somebody else. Just like doing your part. That's what we do. So it applies in all these areas. There's so, I mean, so many other areas. Those are the easy ones to kind of point out, right? Because they're ones that we all kind of recognize. But in your small group, there are, there are loads to carry. Who's going to sit with the kids this week upstairs? Let someone else have a break. Who's going to bring the brownies? That's important. The key to a good small group is brownies, right? Or some kind of dessert, man. It's not, it's not small group. There's no dessert. At least not in our house anyway. But, you know, don't, is the same person bringing it all the time? Come on, man, chip in. You know, all these things. I mean, there's so many ways where we can just, little ways where we carry our burden. We carry each other's burden. Hey, I didn't see so-and-so at church today. What happened to him? Did anybody call him? Well, how about you call him? Say, hey, I missed you. How you doing? Anything I can do for you? Can I pray for you? You know, just, guys, looking around and picking up burdens and carrying them. Amen? That's what makes the church special. That's what makes it awesome. And that's what the Bible calls us to do. Chapter 6, verse 7, uh, we'll go on. So he goes on here. And so, so there's this teamwork concept, right? And then he also then he goes into kind of this whole idea of you reap what you sow, right? You get out what you put in, essentially. He says, don't be, see, be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And, and really, you know, Paul here, and he goes on and says, Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction, and whoever sows to please the Spirit will, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. You know, and, and so Paul is basically saying, Look, guys, this whole idea of life by the Spirit, uh, walking with the Spirit, you know, you're going to get out what you put in, but you don't always see the results right away. And that's kind of how farming is. I'm not a farmer. My, da- my family was. My dad grew up on a tobacco farm in North Carolina, so my, all my you know, ancestor peeps were farmers. So maybe there's some kind of understanding in there somewhere. But, you know, here's the thing. I'll, I don't know much about farming, but I know this. It takes patience. I mean, you have to sit there. And I got a little garden in our backyard, and, man, I get, you know, after one week, it's like water that thing, and nothing there. It's like, what is this? You know, it takes a while. It takes a while, right? It's like every day, it's like, keep watering, keep fertilizing, keep weeding. That's Angela's job. Keep weeding. And, you know, eventually stuff grows, right? Provided there's rain. And, you know, the thing of it is, is that it, it takes patience and time, but you continue doing the right thing. In the end, it produces a harvest. And our walk with God is like that. Our lives spiritually are like that. You're not going to see the results right away. You make a decision, hey, I'm going to get up every morning and have a wonderful prayer time at 6 a.m. before I go to work or school. That's awesome, right? And then you get up the first day, what happens? You have a great prayer time, and then you go right out and you get in a car accident. And you go, that doesn't work. See? Eh, forget it. Eh, it's not like that. It's not how it works. 
But if, I tell you what, if you're going, if you're every day dedicated to prayer, what happens over time? Man, you're, you're, you grow spiritually. You grow closer to God. It's, it's like that spiritually. When we get to continue to give of ourselves. And don't be, don't, don't, don't be worried. God's not going to be mocked. He sees what's going on. And that's kind of good news and bad news, isn't it? Depending on what's going on. I mean, you know, it's like, well, yeah, you know, I could be in trouble or this is going to work out really great one of these days. I mean, it's one of those two things. But God will not be mocked. We do reap what we sow. So Paul says, sow behavior uh, that, reap, that, that will reap eternal life. Sow to the Spirit. Take care of your spiritual life. We do so much to take care of our physical lives, don't we? We've got to find the right house, get the right car, buy the right clothes, have the right stuff. Do all we, we're, we're so we can be so concerned with all these things. But what Paul says, look, you need to sow to reap the Spirit. You know, what are you sowing spiritually? I mean, I think that's a good question for all of us. So I think we would agree, we agree this in principle, right? I'm preaching to the choir. I'm talking to church, right? I'm, so we agree in principle, but what are you sowing to reap the Spirit? Sow, sowing to the Spirit to reap eternal life. It's all about investment. Invest, 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 right? We understand, we understand that concept. What am I investing in? You know, what, what, you know, what kind of investments do you have? Do you have a retirement plan or something you're investing in? What happens when you put... You put a little bit of money in, and then it grows over time, right? Because you're inve- but you keep putting in, putting in. You're investing. That maybe is another good analogy for us to understand spiritually. Are we investing spiritually in our lives, in our families? Investing relationally, investing your time. Once again, guys, look. We, let, let's not become a church that shows up on Sunday, checks in, and then we're out. It takes time to invest. And we're more connected than ever, right? Facebook, phones, cell phones, text messages. You can be so connected these days if you want to be. But but the weird thing is, the more connected we become, the more disconnected we become. Because now you can kind of stay connected through text, but you don't really connect because you don't see. You know what I'm saying? It's weird. But anyway, you understand what I'm talking about. We we become so disconnected. But we've got to invest relationally with one another. All right, chapter 6. So verse 11, let's keep going. So here's what Paul closes out. He says, see what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. So basically, you know, Paul's using a, he, the whole first part of the letter. He basically has someone else write for him because that's kind of how he did it. He dictated it. Someone wrote it. And then now at the end, Paul's going to write his last little subscript in his own hand. So hey, check out this big hand. You know, check out my handwriting, guys. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law. Yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision mean anything. What counts is that new creation, peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. To, uh, from now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. You know, Paul closes out the letter. Of course, he kind of wraps it up, kind of reminds him of part of the purpose he wrote the letter in the first place, right? Because this whole circumcision controversy and, and this whole you know, movement to try to you know, live by the Jewish law. He says, look, these guys are trying to compel you to be circumcised. But they're only doing it uh, to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. For whatever reason, you know, this was, they're trying to get out of it. They're trying to weasel out, Paul says. But he says, the truth is, even those who are circumcised, they're not even keeping the law. It's not even about the law. They're just trying to avoid what the cross brings. Paul's like, don't do that. He's like, you know, there's no reason to boast about anything except for the cross of Christ. You know, as we wrap things up here, we'll take communion in just a moment. But, you know, really, it's, it, it does come back to the cross. For Paul, everything came back to the cross. I believe for us as disciples, everything comes back to the cross. Even the stuff we're talking about today. You know, whether it's, whether it's teamwork, carrying your own burdens, or, 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 
or uh, you know, reap what you sow, all this comes back to the cross of Jesus. Because all that is connected to what Jesus has done for us. He's poured himself out for us. Therefore, we now pour ourselves out for others. It's all connected. And Paul brings it back to that. And of course, he goes on to say, hey, I mean, again, I think somewhat tongue-in-cheek, hey, these guys want to mark themselves up with circumcision. Look, I bear in my body the marks of Christ. You know, the marks of actually having been persecuted for being a Christian. So he kind of drops that bomb on them. He's like, grace, peace with you. I'm out. I was, almost feel like Paul just kind of like, you know, drops the microphone and walks away. He's like, there you go. Oh, yeah, by the way, I got marks. Bam, you know, I'm out. That's kind of what it, that's not kind of how, it, how the letter ends, you know. And, and, and you know, it's kind of funny, actually. I, I wonder if he was chuckling as he wrote it. I don't know. But anyway, but it's about the cross of Christ. You know, and so as we wrap up this series, you know, I want us to, you know, even as we, as we take communion here, I want us to remember why we do what we do. Everything, look, there's a lot of things we can talk about that are practical church matters. Worship, kids' kingdom, all these things, right? We talk about some of them today, contribution. But really, all that's just, those are all sort of things, but everything is connected to the, to the one thing that's most important, and that's Jesus. That's why we do what we do. Otherwise, we could always sleep in this morning, getting up right now, having a brunch. But no, we're here because we're worshiping our God, but we're here because of what Jesus did for us. And because of that, my prayer is that we are motivated by the things that we've read about in Galatians. We're motivated to pour ourselves out for each other, to pour ourselves out for, the, for those in our community. And that together as a church, we would be a light on a hill for all to see how great our God is. So let's go to God in prayer now as we, as we thank him for, for the bread and for the cup. Let's pray. God, thanks so much for, for Jesus. Thank you for uh, the sacrifice that he made for each of us. God, thank you for the way that really everything in it, that we do, or all that we are, goes back to that. God, we're grateful to you that, that we can live a life of freedom. We're grateful that we can uh, walk with your spirit. God, we're grateful for the way that that spirit brings so much depth and blessing to our lives. God, I pray that now as we take this bread, that we would remember that we're the, the source of all of that, that you are the source of all these good things. God, I pray that we would be grateful uh, for the sacrifice that you made for us, for what Jesus did for us on the cross. And uh, God, I pray that it would, um, it, would just, it would speak deeply to our hearts and our spirits this morning. God, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray for the cup. Father, now we come before you again to pray a prayer of thanks. God, thank you for the blood that was spilled for us. Thank you for Jesus. God, thank you that uh, we have the forgiveness of sins. 
I thank you for just the clarity that that brings to our lives, for uh, just for the joy and the peace that it brings. And God, thank you just for your spirit as it brings all those things, just to God, because that's who you are. God, we love you. Again, we thank you. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. my heart Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God Temptation comes my way, and when, when I, I cannot, cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. And when, when I, I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay.
service with an offering to God. If you're visiting with us, we're, we're grateful to have you here as guests, but uh, this is something we do as members uh, as an act of faith. Let's go to God and pray. Uh, Father, we thank you so much that you have blessed us with, a, with an incredible community that allows us to carry each other's burdens. It, you set the example for us in Jesus, uh, who carried all of our burdens himself, God. I pray that as we offer back a little bit of what you've blessed us with, God, that you can take it uh, to meet the needs of the church, to meet the needs uh, of those we don't even know, God, who, uh, who someday we hope to, uh, to help have faith as well, that uh, together, uh, as, as one spirit, as one community, as one body of Christ, that we can worship you and praise your name for the, for the hope and the salvation that we all share. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And then, uh, as we're uh, taking our, our offering up here this morning, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, number one, uh, who's excited about going back to school? Right, teens? Woo! I, I love this. It's, all the parents, everywhere is clapping. This is like a dead section in, in the fellowship. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's been a great summer in the teen ministry, but I got to say, I'm, I'm grateful you guys are going back to school. Uh, I'm not saying you're dumb. But you guys need to go back to school. Anyways, uh, so as we go back to school, though, we're going to kick off uh, as, our, as part of our youth and family ministry tonight. Uh, we have uh, our, our once a month uh, family ministry night. And so if you are a parent of a kid who's going into sixth grade or all the way up to 12th grade, anywhere in between there, we want your family here tonight. Uh, we're going to have some fun. We're going to play some games. But we're also going to address uh, just... A, who we are as a community and passing our faith along to the next generation. And uh, really, it does take a village to raise a child, and uh, we want to do this together. So we're going to have some fun together. We're going to hopefully give you guys some tools to use in your family just to help you guys grow closer together. And as you grow closer to God, that uh, your family will be one that, uh, that really grows in their faith. Amen? So please be here. That'll be here at the building tonight at 6 o'clock. If you can, bring a snack or an appetizer to share just to help make the fellowship better. Uh, that'll be awesome. It'll be from 6 to about 7.30, uh, and then we'll just have some time for fellowship after that. Amen? Uh, and then also, I want to put it on your radar. In two weeks, Labor Day weekend, uh, there is a, a, a huge Jubilee conference in Houston that most of us are going to be going to. It's going to be awesome, but we also know that not everybody's going to be able to make it. Uh, so uh, we will probably have a, a small... Uh, casual communion service here at the building uh, for those who don't go, but we're still putting that together. Uh, but please be talking to your small group leader and letting them know uh, whether or not you're going to be here uh, so that way we can have an idea of, of uh, how many people to, to take care of and, and to, uh, to plan for. Amen? Amen. At this point, why don't we all stand and we'll close out with one final song. between myself and your truth these cursed memories forever seeping through oh my curse for myself let me wanting more till I found myself face down on your shore you say, come to the river, oh, lay yourself down, let your heart be found. You say, come to the river, drink from the cup I there's no more, my restless heart.
we are dismissing fellowship, I just want to let you know there's a bunch of pineapples in the hallway. Uh, Jeff Mercer is donating here. I guess they had a event yesterday, has some left over. So uh, there's, you take one, but it's leave a little donation for the team ministry. They're going to collect some money for the team ministry. So if you want to grab one, please take one. Leave a couple bucks and uh, enjoy. Thanks. Draw!